Hey guys, it's Nate, aka The Foot Accountant. Welcome back to the channel. Team of the Year is getting better and better with each and every day that passes by. And I'm getting super pumped for the real grind to start with a full team coming into packs tomorrow on FC24. But what makes me excited about it is what happened yesterday. I want to talk about Team of the Year Icons Team 2. I want to talk about the defenders that are in packs. 10 Team of the Year cards, which got me my first blue my first team of the year i packed one guys yesterday i'll talk about that in the video today but it's all that we saw yesterday especially including the massive sbc that we had the best sbc of team of the year so far but it's all the SBCs that are going to be excited, and that's what I want to talk about in the video today. Also, uncover a couple of leaks for what is upcoming for Team of the Year content and evolutions. If you're excited for it, drop a thumbs up and subscribe if you're new. Let's go. Let's start with the SBCs. Why not? That's where the hype was yesterday. Not just with the Sawa, which that is an absolutely insane card. But we had another gamble, if you will, um, casino player pick sometimes it's called. Whatever you want to call it. It is the 87 plus Dynasties Team of the Group Stage or Win or wild cards player pick this is a fun player pick to do especially during these next couple of days when we'll be spamming packs doing upgrades and getting a lot of fodder this will be a pretty easy one to craft it's an 86 rated squad the same requirement as the one that was dropped last week but instead of having radioactives in it ea put the winter wild cards in it instead it's only 17 percent upvoted but i think that's because right now a lot of people are saving their packs for the full team and not opening packs and not crafting it just with coins, right? 86k for this, yes, technically is a little bit expensive. I opened it yesterday and I got Sane, so it's kind of like a break even. He's a little bit less than 80k. But you have great potential with the winter wild cards being added into this. You have great potential of packing something really, really cool. So I think for an SBC that'll be fun to craft and very easy to craft, only being one squad during the team of the year pack spam, I think that's a W. I don't really think that impacted the market yesterday, apart from actually 86s went up. They're, they were almost like 10,000 coins, but they were up about 1,000 coins yesterday from the low to mid-8 range. Some of them went over 10k, as you see Gioro here went to about 10.3. I think a lot of them kind of peaked at like 9.7 to 10k. So if you invested in 86s for that, GG's. 87s are up, 88s are up, fodder is up, and that is not what we expected after yesterday but that's not because of the content that we got in SBCs we'll talk about that a little bit later it's more to do with what happened in the store but with the SBC the best SBC of team of the year we talked about it yesterday and it was delivered by EA this Sawa card is awesome the two playstyle pluses press proven and Relentless Plus are so good. The boost that she got on the card is solid. It's not an ins incredible boost. They could have boosted her a little bit more, let's be honest. Maybe in the, the physical got a pretty big boost. Maybe passing, shooting a little bit further. But 93 passing, 93 dribbling, 86 pace, 88 shooting, 4 star, 4 star, high, high work rates, center attacking mid, and center mid positions in the card. And there is really not a flaw in this card, guys. For a Kind of Conte-esque. I know we use that term a lot, or at least I feel like I do. Whenever there's a shorter midfielder that's dropped, you know, I kind of compare it to Conte, right? Because that's kind of the mold that this card fits into. But a Conte-esque, like, rapid, fast midfielder that is going to never lose out on stamina because she's got Relentless Plus with high, high work rates and press proven, which is probably one of the best play styles in the midfield. You've also got incisive pass, long ball pass, and quick step on the card as well. And for the price of the SBC, I have to think, if this card was on the market, it's only 10 squads. Her base icon card was 500k, oh, like 600,000 coins before this leak. Now it's like 400,000 coins because this SBC is so loved and such great value. I think that on the market, this card would be probably more than what the SBC price is just because there's so much hype for Sawa. I haven't even used her card this year, but I'm so excited to be crafting this SBC as soon as I start opening packs because what I know and what so many people have talked about is this is one of the best midfielders in the the game and everybody's excited for this card 1.3 million coins is the price which if i take a look at like franck ribery's card at two mil on the market you take a look at some of the other team of the year icons that were dropped yesterday like essien's a mil and i would do this sawa card over essien 100 percent lam is 900k which is a little bit cheaper but again sawa so clear of that card mateus again a different card to sawa better pace and shooting than her but it's three million coins I really think that the Sawa is a great price, guys. Only 10 squads, pretty craftable. Only a couple higher rated in there. You have one 89 and two 88s, a couple 87s. 
and then a couple 86s and you're done like that's it it's actually decently easy to do while you're doing team of the year upgrade packs all those saved packs that you'll be able to open if you've got more than like 20 packs saved you'll be able to really put a dent in an SBC like this with the 83 times 10 that is out right now and all that good stuff as well it is so craftable guys this is an insane card and it's probably going to get annoying seeing this card in so many teams later on this year because that SBC is being completed by so many people and if you didn't need the convincing of the upvotes and downvotes on footbin on the SBC look at the card itself 4,400 upvotes and 471 downvotes um, yeah, that's an incredible SBC, and I think it's one that I'm going to prioritize almost right away as I look to building an SBC out during Team of the Year with the fodder that I get from PAX. Now, let's go to Evolutions as well, as we're kind of talking through yesterday's content. We'll talk about how Sawa impacted the market and other things a little bit later, but let's talk about Evolutions, because we had one yesterday, which was a little bit surprising, because we, don't have, we haven't been getting Evos in the middle of the week recently, but we had a center back evolution team of the year center back prospect and i'm gonna say it, guys this is the best evolution of a team of the year so far it is a free evo with a higher overall max rating than what we've seen recently max 85 with 82 pace 88 physical and you get the jockey play style plus from this evolution again it's free it's not that many games to do you do get a sizable boost here getting plus three pace four passing three dribbling four defense and three physical so it's not bad now if i look into my club i don't know why it's showing it's showing me ben sabini in here he does not fit he's got a play style plus i'm so confused people have been having problems with this evolution if you uh have done a card that was a um the unclaimed evo glitch i'm hearing like the people that are not claiming cards to put it into this evolution are having some problems with that i'm going to test that theory out myself because i'm going to put chris richards into this which might it kind of seems like a little bit of um it doesn't seem right because he actually gets playstyle plus jockey from the keep up evo which he was in that this new evolution team their prospect also gives out jockey but like the upgrade in stats for him is so great it's fine being one playstyle for me at least for how that card looks but this is an evo we'll talk about the market related to this that people like and it's creating some really crazy cards i mean this lewis dunk centurions card is um like extinct on the market at 70k because of the upgrade that you can give him 92 percent upvoted evo and it's really because of some of the big name players that are eligible to fit into this Colnate Saliba this career card is not doable so don't fall for it there but a lot of people I think feel like they missed out on maybe some of the earlier David Alaba evolutions and this is kind of an opportunity to catch up for a little bit of a cheaper price Alaba though is looking like he's he's, he's extinct again this guy's never on the market for all the crazy evos that he's had this year of course the 93 and even the 90 are the best versions but now that you have another one gold Alaba has gone extinct on the market again it's crazy how evos are impacting things i think actually saliba is almost max price too he is he's max price extinct at ten thousand coins uh but if you're opening la liga or if you're opening premier league upgrades during team of the year at all i would not buy these cards i would say you have a decent chance especially if you're opening a lot of those to pack these players on tradable first owner and then you could put them into this evo if you would like to do so kim and jay the first evo that he fits in here as well and i do believe there are some good combination evos for some lower rated cards um, involving the Patrick Hu Evo and this team of their center back prospect evolution and it's nice to see that finally some special cards that maybe you had stashed in your club from a long time ago like this Juan Foyth who can play right back center back CDM like three star three star medium high in this evolution goes to an 89 rated card with 89 defense and above 80 stats in pace pa uh, passing dribbling defense and physical that's a nice card there there's some really good special cards that if you have in your club they might go into this evolution. So that's something to kind of keep in mind there. That is one of the best Evos we've had in a hot minute, I'll say it. Now, Jockey Playstyle play, play Plus isn't like the craziest one ever, but it is good. And that is nice for me to give us a free evolution that gives a Playstyle Plus. You can kind of see the beginning of like the power curve of Evos even start to move up a little bit with that right there yesterday. Now, let's talk about the cards that were dropped into packs. The Team of the Year Icons Team 2 and the Team of the Year Defenders. And guys, one thing we were talking about in yesterday's video that I was expecting to see was EA like they had done with attackers and with defenders uh, and mid, uh, sorry attackers and midfielders run lightning rounds like the 85 times 7 and then defender specific packs 
they didn't do either. They dropped a 675,000 coin pack in the store, but the lightning rounds yesterday were weak. They weren't that crazy, I guess, because EA was like, it's a Tuesday. Maybe they thought they, a lot of people were not going to open packs. But since that was the case, there was not a lot of supply yesterday on this game. And right now you have prices for team of the year defenders that are very inflated. If you go take a look at some of these cards in the market, they are almost like so rare. They're almost extinct. In fact, a Virgil van Dijk is extinct at 5.7 million coins, which doesn't make sense when you look at the rest of the team of the year. Is he comparable to Erling Holland with how much hype he has right now? I don't think so. Is he worth it to be a million coins more than Jude Bellingham team of the year? Not a chance. Is the fact that Teo Hernandez is 3.8 mil, does that throw you off a little bit? Like, is he really worth 3.8 mil? No, he's not. The reason these cards are really expensive, and even some of the women's cards are really expensive too, but specifically the men's, is because they're just not getting packed. How many Teo Hernandez's are on the market right now? One. There's one team of the year Teo on the market right now. Like, Ruben Diaz is 3 million coins. Guys, these cards should drop off a lot in the next two days, especially on Thursday, because they're just so rare because they barely got packed yesterday as there was not a lot of supply. And that's going to really hurt these cards once we get to Thursday to Friday. They're going to have some big time price corrections because the rest of the team has been supplied a lot more than these cards have comparably. And you're seeing it with the women's team and with the icons as well. I don't think Karchawi should really be worth 1.7. Not that she's very overpriced like Ruben Diaz or like Teo Hernandez. But I also don't think that Renard uh, is going to be 1.7. I think she might end up being like the low 1.3 to 4. I do believe she's one of the closest cards right now to where her final price will be. With how much Ona Battles... Oh, man, I worked on her name yesterday. We're going to call her Ona B because that Ona Battles in my head, but that's not how you say your name. It's Ona Batie. I'm working on it. I'm working on it. Sorry for my Spanish lads and, and lasses. Um... I think her card's going to end up being under a million coins, right? With the pack weight that I saw yesterday on her. Now, Herbs as well is almost at her, what I think will be common price on the market. I think she's going to end up being, I'm going to lower my target now. She's going to be 100K. Um, and she actually might be a really good investment for a 94 rated card for 100K for SPC fodder, which is crazy to say. Um, but that's there. And then Millie Bright. And uh, that is the team of the year, guys, that I picked up yesterday from Weekend League Rewards. Just for a quick segue. This is my first team leader pack poll. Gave us a number one on the counter. I was not expecting to pack anything yesterday. And I opened up an 84 pick from 11 wins. And Millie Bright was in it. It was kind of cool, but a little bit anticlimactic because I was not expecting anything. And it was a player pick instead of a pack. So I didn't see the whole animation. But uh, yeah, her card is... It's decent. It's not bad. It's a nice team of the year to start things off with for sure. Her, actually, her one goal that I scored in champs qualifiers yesterday was a bicycle kickoff of a corner. Um, and she's... Kind of like Oberdorf surprised me when I tried Oberdorf during the week. Bruiser Plus and the Aerial Plus with her other playstyles, she's pretty good. I think I would actually prefer her as more of a stay back CDM type of player. Um, and I do notice that her controlled uh, sprint speed style and also her lack of pace, even with a shadow, does pose problems. I don't think she would even play in my team over gold DVD, I hate to say it, but I think she would end up being a better defensive midfielder. Um, she would be good for Balak. Balak, I love the power shots, but I think I would probably play her as a CDM in game. I think that would be a little bit better. But that was my first team of the year poll yesterday. So just to talk about that, that's another reason why I'm excited. But seeing the team of the years yesterday, yes, their prices are expensive and they are rare. And same thing with the team of the year icons. But at the same time, guys, there were so many people opening packs yesterday. This is why I'm excited for team of the year, and we'll get to it in a second. Um, seeing people open packs yesterday, guys, it was I was really realizing that these cards, the defenders, are are still very packable, right? Very packable. There were so many people opening the 583 plus defenders packs yesterday, and there were countless people on Twitter that were sending me tweets in the Twitch chat as we were streaming live. They were saying, oh my goodness, just packed Frimpong or Allison, right? Yes, that some of the, the women's players like um, Erps and Millie Bright were getting packed as well, and um, even a couple Onya Batiers, but like... Really, a lot of those men's defender cards were getting packed from those upgrades, and that's one of the things that gives me a lot of hype and a lot of hope for what is to come in the next couple of days. But for now, these cards are expensive. Same thing with the team of the years. Lom has dropped down a lot. He was like a million coins earlier. Now he's 879. Uh, I think Rio is very overpriced. 4.5 million coins. That Rio card is crazy. 
I think there's a big price correction coming there. Same thing for SEN and even Mateus. I think Mateus is probably going to end up being like maybe 2.5 to 2.7 if I had to guess. Um, Lam is probably going to be in the 5 to 600K range like Javi and Zola. And Essien is probably going to be down there as well. Uh, but still, nice cards that were released. I'm not complaining at all. I'm just telling you guys right now, they are inflated in price on the market because of the state of the supply that was dropped yesterday on this game. But I'm still excited for it, guys. And let's get into that. Again, why am I pumped for Team of the Year? And why could this be one of the best Team of the Years ever? Well, first of all, the number of Team of the Years that I see people packing, it's it's really a true testament to the change from last year, FIFA 23, to this year. Like, even you can tell by the prices on the market. Kevin De Bruyne. Let's look up Kevin De Bruyne's card, right? Every day I look at this card and I think, man, KDB for like 2.6. How much is he right now? 2.5 mil. It seems kind of cheap, but then he never rises because... He got packed a good amount, even with only two days in packs. You look at the amount of supply on the market and you realize, wow, there's actually a decent amount on the market. It goes back to what we said and what we saw on Friday when we saw the attackers that were dropped in packs and we saw their prices kind of get low right away and they were so supplied. The same thing is still happening. It actually feels like you have a chance at packing a team of the year this year, which is so unlike last year. And it reminds me of FIFA 22 when we had a really crazy team of the year pack weight. Now, again, it's still hard to pack a team of the year. And I'm not saying that it's going to be easy, but it feels like you have a chance. And that's what makes this good and makes this scenario really good for the packs is if you feel like you have a chance, you see other people packing them and then you end up hitting one yourself. It just makes the whole experience so much better when you feel like you have a chance, right? And that's the kind of way that I'll word it because these are still difficult to pack and people will go a lot of packs without getting one. But also, people will open, like I did, a couple of player picks, and then boom, you'll hit one. So what I'm seeing on the market is these guys and girls have a really good um, pack weight compared to previous years like last year. Now, that, that being said, the women's team seems more packable than the men's team. And you look at their prices, and they are a lot cheaper than the men's team. But I still think that the men's team has a really good opportunity to be packed as well. Frimpong and Allison are going to be the most two packed cards from the team for sure but nobody's going to complain if you pack Frimpong like that card looks phenomenal now we have not even just one team of team of the years in packs right we've got two teams of team of the years we've got team of the year icons that are in packs as well and we have honorable mentions that are incoming as well that's another thing that gets me excited guys think about it we're going to be adding more cards into packs which actually has brought up a really interesting um conversation yesterday in the stream we were talking about this does the honorable mention cards being added to the game and added to packs on Friday hurt the pack weight of the actual team of the years? Now, I'm in the boat that says no, uh, just because, well, there's going to be no real hard proof and evidence, but there is a very convincing argument that some people believe that it does. And really, we're never going to know the answer. And uh, from the team of the year pack weight that we've seen so far, that's really all that we have to compare it to. We'll see how the weight is on Thursday, I guess. If you're going to open some packs on Thursday and then more on Friday, you can go ahead and do that. I still think Friday is the best day to save for, though, because if I have the chance at packing 24 cards one day versus maybe like 40 the next day or let's say like 36, I don't know how many they're going to put into the honorable mentions team. I'm going to take my chances with 36, especially when you consider upgrade packs and how many more team of the year cards through honorable mentions you may be able to pack through that. Now, speaking of honorable mentions, we do have a couple of leaks to look at, not just for honorable mention cards, but for the 12th man and woman. And the two honorable mention leaks, they're kind of like, we'll call them common sense, right? But based on how EA has done this in the past, like we mentioned in a couple days ago when the 12th man vote was released, um, they put the other cards that do not win the 12th man vote like Trent and Valverde, right? Ronaldo has one, but Trent and Valverde are going to get honorable mentions cards. So those were leaked. The stats are a prediction. And usually for honorable mentions, it is worth saying the boosts aren't as big, but they still get really high rated cards. They still get really, really good items like the Fede Valverde honorable mentions last year. It looks like it's going to be two years in a row for him as an honorable mentions card. Trent, I mean, I voted for him in team of the year. He would have been sick to have as a full upgraded 94, 95 rated card for sure. But this card is still going to be very good in this game. Watch out for more leaks of honorable mentions coming out today as well. They will be in packs Friday. That is the expectation. And uh, that'll take the whole pack spam and potential for grinding the menus in this game up to a whole new level now i mentioned the 12th man and 12th woman technically this wasn't leaked until yesterday so we probably should talk about it right 12th man is cristiano ronaldo the question we were talking about in the stream yesterday was 
What's his rating going to be? They made Messi a 97. They're going to make Ronaldo a 97 as well. That is kind of the trend that they have been doing recently. Um, last year, they made Erling Holland a pretty high-rated 12th man. We'll have to see what this is. I could see him being anywhere from 95 to 97 rated. But you know what? Since Messi's a 97, they'll probably make uh, Ronaldo a 97 as well. And he will come out into packs on Friday with the honorable mentions. He will not be in packs tomorrow with the full team. He will be in packs on Friday. And then for the women's 12th um, player vote, it's Pop. So Olga did not win. Pop is the 12th women player of the year. And also that that's not bad though. I'm not complaining about this at all. Olga could be good, would have been good, is going to get an honorable mentions. Same thing with Benini, who of course, just like Trent and Valverde were in the vote, but didn't win. But this pop card could be crazy. Maybe power header and finesse plus. I hope they give her finesse plus because she has that on her Centurions card. And that would be a perfect link, of course, to Oberdorf. So that'd be a really nice perfect link to have for those cards right there and all the positions that Oberdorf can play. So those are your 12th men and women and then also honorable mentions. And like I mentioned, uh, honorable mentions at least are going to be coming more today and that could impact the market, which we'll talk about in a second. But to wrap up the conversation on why this could be one of the better team of the years we've had in the past couple of years, take a step back for a moment, guys. I know the SBC content and especially like getting packs and grinding the menus in the game this year, honestly has been really good like we we can't complain about all the packs that we get in objectives and we get upgrade packs every single week multiple different types of them it's just so easy to grind fodder through the gameplay the extra packs that you get the season giving out all the packs that it does we have taken a step back and looking at all of the SBCs that we have right now to craft during team of the year when we're opening all these packs this is unprecedented in terms of content. We have a team of the year Sawa, team of the year Best, Maldini, Zidane, Eusebio, Hullet. Um, who else do we have back here? Thierry Henry, Zico, and Cafu. I counted nine meta, really meta icon player SBCs that so many people are going to be able to craft during team of the year. That is just insane, right? You have cards and packs that seem semi-packable for a team of the years, for saying that for a team of the year. And then you have all these crazy SBCs that everybody's going to be crafting. I think that nobody is going to walk into team of the year and leave without having at least half of your team changed because of all of these SBCs that are available. Now, I know some of you guys have already got these done, like Zidane, you know, you've had those done. Maybe even you've completed Best or Sawa already. But for those who are taking it day by day and still looking forward to the grind and craft like I am, I haven't done half these SBCs. This is incredible to have this amount of player SBCs here. And that's not even mentioning Bruno, Davies, Alex Morgan. Uh, we, of course, have, have a uh, Conte that is still to come as well. So there's still a lot of SBCs up upcoming. You've got icon picks. The icon pick is refreshing today, right? Um, if you've been saving fodder for that, that's refreshing today as well. Guys, the content is, is pretty crazy. And we expect better content each and every year. But like this year, especially with the packs, I'm really excited for team of the year because this is looking crazy. And if you're like, Nate, I have nothing right now in my club. Make sure you're doing the daily bronze, silver, and gold upgrades. And everybody's going to be getting packs from the season objectives that are going to be all resetting as the new season starts when the full team of the year is coming into packs. It starts on Thursday at Rivals Rewards time. There's going to be a winter wild card. There's going to be team of the year honorable mentions and then packs and player picks. And of course, the XP with which with also looks like the red objectives coming out again for the red evolutions to put that card design on the card. That's all resetting. And that's been one of the things that at least for me has made objectives a little bit slow in the past couple of days. Like it's been, it's always nice to claim a pack every couple of days or maybe even every day with XP, but you haven't been able to do that recently. And once this resets this next week during the whole second week of team of the year, you're going to be getting fodder from this because you'll be grinding up and getting XP. So um, even the team of the year cup, right? That's a piece of promo content that we know is coming this weekend as well. That's big for a new season. That's going to have probably some objective packs tied to it, which is all just phenomenal. So I'm really excited for team of the year guys. And I know that packing one yesterday probably helped out my hype levels a little bit. But I still think I would be excited regardless because I'm seeing how many people are packing Team of the Years and I see how much content is on this game. We are going to be able to have a lot of fun during Team of the Year and hopefully pack some really sick cards. Now, let's talk about buying Team of the Years for a second because this is also a very, very popular talking point. And I want to talk about it today before we get into all the busy things with the market in the coming days and, and videos and everything with Team of the Year like in packs and everything being here. Guys, with the Team of the Year and the pack weight, I'm changing a little bit of my theories on how I think these cards are going to move out of packs. Everybody's looking at last year 
And guys, I went back and did a little bit of research yesterday. Last year was one of the only years in the past four to five years in this game that the team of the year went out of packs and rose as much as it did. And I think that could be a testament of, number one, the pack weight was dreadful. Last year, team of the year, it felt like it wasn't even worth opening packs. So many people didn't pack one, and that made those cards super rare in the market. So, of course, they went up. And second of all, you had a lot more people playing the game and a lot more gameplay demand, I think, because of the World Cup, right? World Cup years every single year on Ultimate Team. The market's impacted by that, and I think we saw that last year. The last time that the market and Team of the Year cards actually rose up after um, Team of the Year, like, really, really good, was FIFA 20. I went back and looked at the graphs. FIFA 21 and in 22, cards did not do that well um, on this game after they went out of packs for Team of the Years, for the most part. Now, a couple of them here or there will go up. Usually, the 12th man's a bit more rare. Sometimes that one goes up. You know, Team of the Year icons did insane last year, too. Team Leader Icons this year could do pretty well because they're always pretty rare and they're special versions for cards that don't often get many special versions. We'll be definitely looking to invest in a few of these cards, but I don't think it's going to be as insane of an investment that everybody is remembering from last year and making it out to be and really wanting to get in on this year. I really think, guys, that between Thursday and Friday, there will be a buy time for Team of the Year cards. But again, it's not a, a card that you're probably going to buy and hold into your team till March and end up making a million coins on it like you did last year with a card like a Team of the Year uh, Messi or a Team of the Year Holland. I think the rises this year are not going to be as good, even though they have two playstyle pluses and they are the most meta cards in this game right now by a long shot. The amount of icons and stuff that is craftable via the SBCs, uh, I think, closes that gap a little bit. And it makes people maybe not want to have to go out and pay 2 million coins for a Rodri when they can go and do a Hullet that is maybe not as good statistically, but feels almost as cracked in-game. It's that sort of thing uh, that makes me think Team of the Years will still rise up a little bit, especially this weekend, because everybody wants to buy them. They're the hot new cards, and everybody wants to get their hands on them. But I just don't think over time that they're going to rise up as well as they have in especially last year's game. So be careful with that. But with the pack weight, we've seen that big time supply actually impacts these team of the years. So we're looking to Thursday and Friday for these cards for probably a buy window. And we'll kind of talk through that as we get to those days. Uh, but definitely watch out for some more panic today with these cards. I think that the honorable mention leaks are kind of like the next big thing to maybe impact some of these card prices, um, especially for some of the players that could potentially get leaked for that. And then, of course, what's always going to impact these team of the year cards, the perfect example is this Erling Holland right now, is the hype, right? Erling Holland got hyped up in the past couple of days. Pros were using him in the pro event. A lot of people were tweeting about him saying this card is just the most broken specimen in the game, which I did play against one yesterday, and he did some crazy animations, and his pace combined with the control lengthy, 99s, everything almost, and shooting, reactions, composure, strength, heading, jumping, aggression, like, yeah, this card is, it's stupid, is what this card is, and he's up, like, six, seven hundred k and literally yesterday because of that, um, but again, like, I don't think that's going to happen to all the cards. And I think that Holland's probably not going to go back down to what was he? 4.7, 4.8 mil on Friday. I don't know if he goes that low, but I could see him maybe in the low 5 mil range again, depending on the pack weight, depending on the panic that happens in the next couple of days. So watch Team of the Year's Thursday and Friday if you want to buy one for your team, because I think once we get to Saturday and Sunday, the market's literally just going to get unlocked, if you will. Like, think about it. Everybody's saving their packs. And we'll talk about this more tomorrow as well and on Friday that everybody's been saving their packs. Like by the time we get to Friday, literally everybody's opened their packs, right? Nobody would be saving anymore because the upgrade SBCs are out. They can go craft, do the SBCs they want. That's when the market is kind of fully unlocked. That's when you're going to start to see prices move up really good again. And also I would say with today and the leaks of more honorable mention cards, once we probably get into more of these, I think that could be another round of panic on the market for other out of pack specials like winter wild cards, maybe some of the versus cards. I was watching a few of these on the market yesterday. Some of these players that have maybe not risen up so well uh, since the first kind of rise last weekend, or maybe they did go up a little bit, but you think you want it to for your team. Like, let's say you want to buy center back Yashin for your team. If he drops back down to like low 900K range in the next day or two with the start of team of the year with... Um, People may be selling with some of the leaks for honorable mentions, like we said. 
that could be a time to get in on some of these out of pack cards for your team. I think that's going to create a really good window where that's going to be like the last point, And then you'll start to see some of these most popular meta rare cards really start to take off. So if you're in a trading mindset or buying something for your team mindset, that is kind of what I would tell you to watch for is the out of pack special meta can be low tier, can be high tier. Just focus on rare, focus on big clubs, big names, and rarity. Those are going to be your best friends when picking a card that's going to end up rising out of packs as we kind of get towards this weekend and the first weekend after team of the year, during team of the year still, but when everybody's opened their packs and there's so many more coins on the market. Now, speaking of market as well, let's talk about fodder because we kind of went over it at the beginning, but we didn't talk about everything, right? We're looking at fodder prices that are up. If we take a look at like Rodri, he's back into packs yesterday. He might not be the best one to look at, but he was out of packs and then went back into packs and his price still went up because we did not have those lightning rounds that we thought we we're going to have. A lot of people are going out and doing that Sawa SBC and still crafting because people are still opening packs on this game um, and trying to craft at the moment and do player SBCs and maybe even some of those exchange SBCs as well. Fodder is up, guys, because there was no supply yesterday. Now, if I had fodder, I think I would take this kind of spike as an opportunity to cash out and sell some of this stuff. We saw what happened on Friday, right? Remember what happened to the 90 rated players that were in packs on Friday? Do I need to remind you? Harry Kane was 55K. We had all those lightning rounds, right? And then, doom, all the way down to like 48,000 coins. But then, whoop, he went right back up because, again, everybody was doing SBCs. I think for the high tier on fodder, we're going 88s and above. I think on Thursday and Friday, you're going to have two buy opportunities for that exact same thing. Pl uh, prices dropping with supply, people opening saved up packs. Get on bids, get on that grind, stock your transfer list, stock your club, especially even if you just want to do SPCs and craft during team of the year and you're going to open packs, stock a couple when that time comes and when those cards are cheap. But then when we get into next week, those cards are just going to go up. Yes, we're still going to have lightning rounds released, but less people will be opening them and these cards will be in more demand as people are crafting the SPCs. Low tier fodder. That I will probably sell and get out of, especially before Thursday with everything that is coming. Yes, we still have a lot of SBCs that require those 83s, 4s, 5s, and 6s, but those cards just don't seem to do as good unless we get specific requirements for them. Um, and I think that with all that supply that would be coming, like the 84 times 10 lightning round packs, if they drop those, the 85 times 7s, that's going to supply a lot of 85s, a lot of 86s and 87s. There's even more crazy packs in the store that we haven't seen yet. So I'd be careful with that sort of fodder tomorrow. I know we're kind of looking ahead to tomorrow, which we'll talk about it again with in more detail tomorrow too. But I just wanted to get a head start today and talk about some of that stuff because I think it's really helpful for the preparation of what is upcoming on this game. Now today, some more help and preparation for what's coming today on Wednesday. The 83.5 midfielders goes away. The 83.5 defenders is coming in. That might be the only content we get today. Not expecting a big day at all. We could have our um, player of the month for the League One, which is Pierre-Emerick Aubameyang. The Mbappe SBC is gone, and I do believe it's either today or tomorrow for Aubameyang, and I think it might be today. Who knows? Sometime in the next two days, Aubameyang. And then there is an Evo leak for maybe yet another Evo, but this is some of the most confusing, one of the most confusing Evo leaks that I've ever seen. Team of the Year Legendary Comeback Evo. It's 200,000 coins, and it's another Icon Evolution, guys, but it fits such a small number of icons it doesn't even seem like it makes sense um packs or sorry max 91 overall max pace 76 passing 84 defense 94 and physicality 88 you get the weak foot upgrade and then pinged pass and bruiser play styles not even play style plus the cards that fit this according to rick it's like what is that one two three four five six seven cards seven cards that fit this evolution um you, that does not look very hyped to me at all. I don't even know why they would drop this Evo unless it's a fake leak, unless there's something that's trolly about this. Like the Icon Evo that was released the first time around anyway was not good and a lot of people didn't do it. So dropping another one that looks worse in a sense doesn't make any sense as well. But uh, that is a, an Evo leak. So watch out for that. Maybe that's coming today. Maybe that's not coming until the weekend. I would be fine if that didn't drop, but maybe if it upgrades an icon that you have in your club and that works for you, then you are happy about that. One last thing I wanted to say is center backs 
are down. We forgot to cover this when we were talking about the market. Center mids because of Sawa and center backs because of the Evo are down a lot. I know we looked at uh, Saliba and stuff like that going up. Well, look at Saliba's winter wild cards item. He is down. He's back up a little bit now. But look at this drop yesterday from 270 all the way to 220. Yeah, that's a big 50k drop right there because people are putting his card into an evolution and getting a card that is maybe quote unquote better. But is it really better? I don't know. Uh, but a lot of those cards are down. And then the midfielders are down, of course. Um, where's Araujo? I want to look up Araujo really quick because that was a card that dropped yesterday. And then I was able to flip some Luka Modric. Uh, Luka Modric was a card that went down a lot because, again, center mids were dropping because of Sawa. I bought some Modric at 255 to 260. And I was able to just sell one at 287. It looks like right now he's 284. But this was his graph from 300. Bang. All the way down to 260. Got a couple snipes there. And now he's back up. That sort of stuff is what you can be trading with right now on this game. Focus on the rare cards. This Tevez was a rare fluctuation yesterday that worked out. He went from 1.02, 1.03. Yeah, I think he actually sold for like 1.12 or 3. So you can make like a solid 40, 50K there. But the market's really going to start to unlock the next couple days in this game. But what a day yesterday with the defenders being out. I don't think they're going to run more lightning rounds today. I think these cards are going to stay inflated. They're going to stay a little bit rare. But I do believe, like the midfielders did, that these card prices will be dropping during the day today as people sell them in preparation for tomorrow. And watch out again for those honorable mention leaks. That's the video for today, guys. If you did enjoy, drop a thumbs up on it. Comment down below if you have any questions. And subscribe if you're new. It's been Nathan Wood Catch you guys in the video tomorrow. Peace. Out.